thanks for tuning in to episode 6 of The Rotunda Show. I'm Megan Kozik. And I'm Paul Elder. Our top story involves Wheeler Lawn. As many of you may know, Wheeler Lawn is host to some of Longwood's greatest traditions, including color wars. However, recently the lawn has seen an extreme makeover. For more on this, here's Rotunda Show reporter Kyle Sinners. I'm standing next to Wheeler Mall, the site where numerous Longwood traditions, such as commencement and color wars, take place. Currently, half of the mall is blocked off for the construction of a new pathway which seems to be eliminating the frequent traffic of footballs and frisbees. In a time of economic instability and statewide budget cuts, many students have been asking why. A primary student concern with the project is where Color Wars and Oktoberfest tradition will take place now that a large portion of Wheeler Mall is paved. Director of the Student Union and Involvement, Susan Sullivan, is unsure whether the mall will continue to be used for Color Wars, but she has alternative suggestions. I don't know. Um, but if they can't have it at Wheeler, we could, there's definitely other locations that we could have at Eiler would also be a perfect location. So I think we could possibly do it on Eiler if we're unable to do it um, on the Wheeler Mall. Um, I think with the sidewalk there, it does make it a little bit more challenging just because sometimes people slip and fall and, you know, so um, it will definitely continue just because they're doing some construction to Wheeler Mall doesn't necessarily mean that we won't have it. We'll definitely have it. We'll just have to find a different venue for it, so. Head of SGA, Caitlin Ravine, had information on why the project is taking place. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's going to be um, very useful. And it's also going to play into the new student union um, where the sidewalks are laid, um, how they'll connect with the new sidewalks in the student union. They've had issues with people um, in wheelchairs in the past with gra during graduation, and they've also had people complaining about walking in high waters to and nice shoes and stuff. Vice President of Student Affairs, Tim Pearson, had more to say on the subject. Uh, if you ask any junior marshal who has worked the uh, graduation, th that area has, um, it's kind of like a bowl in there actually, the, the mall is, and so it gets very wet. And so it's always a problem when we have 8,000 guests in here for graduation. Um, and so I think it was one of the things that they looked at in, in the capital planning area, encouraged the president to look at, here was a plan how we could improve this especially when you look at the activity on that level of the mall now with the new Science Center. The project is expected to be finished by March or early April. This is Kyle Sinners reporting for the Rotunda Show. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Color Wars next semester. It sure will. Recently, Longwood's administration has become concerned with some damages that have been inflicted on the Cunningham Residence Hall smoke hut. Rotunda Show reporter A.J. Kredis has more. I'm standing behind the Cunningham's dormitory near the center of campus at Longwood University. School administrators say that the smoke hut behind me has been the subject of vandalism recently by students who use it. This hut is the center of campus. This is where everybody comes. This is where, you know, going from one end of campus to the other. It just happens to be that one stop in campus where everybody can actually smoke a cigarette since we're not allowed to smoke on campus anywhere. School administrators say this popular stop on campus, called the Cunningham Smoke Hut, has been in need of constant repairs recently. We did some repairs on the railings. Um, we've replaced numerous uh, shingles of the cedar-sided shingles on the facility and also parts of the floorboard. Continued damage to the smoking hut could mean potential repercussions for students. Or as we have to repair it more and more, I think there might be charges assessed. Uh, right now, we, we do our best to keep it maintained as we do as everything else on campus. So. Some students claim, however, that smokers are being targeted unfairly on campus and shouldn't have to pay for the damages. If people were being rowdy somewhere else, I don't think there would be as much to do about it, honestly. I think that there's some weird crusade going on against tobacco smoking on our campus. and. Chief of Police Bob Beach had this to say about the smoking hut situation. I think smoking huts um, as a whole really haven't had a, a lot of problems. But they're gathering places for folks. Um, you know, sometimes they get a little loud. Sometimes. Chief Beach recommends talking to campus police if a student does witness disrespectful behavior at the smoking huts. It may be that authority figure speaking to them is enough to, to put them, uh, at least understand that they're causing a problem. So, anyway. This is A.J. Caritas reporting for the Rotunda Show. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Rotunda Show. 
I'm Will Armbruster here with your sports update. Men's basketball moved to 14-10 on Wednesday night after defeating University of Texas Pan America and extending their winning streak to seven games. Rotunda Show Sports was there and had the coverage. Longwood men's basketball hosted the University of Texas Pan America Wednesday night at Willett Hall en route to a 77-61 victory over the visiting Broncos. Kevin Swecker and Dana Smith each led the Lancers with 13 points, and Swecker added three steals. Billy Robinson had a solid game in the post, going for 12 points while grabbing six rebounds as well. E.J. Dawson and Duran Neal ran the point for the Lancers. Dawson dissed out four assists and pulled down four boards, while Neal had six points to go along with five assists and a steal. Ranked fourth in the nation in turnover margin, the Lancers grabbed 10 steals while forced 26 total turnovers that were converted into 24 points. Also, the current seven-game winning streak is the largest in the Division I era for the Lancers, dating back to the 94-95 season when they posted a mark of eight. A hidden key success for the Lancers this season has been their intelligence controlling the basketball. Currently, the Lancers hold a 6-1 to assist-to-turnover ratio, a mark that leaves them fifth in the nation among other Division I schools. From Willett Hall and Longwood University, I'm Will Armbruster, Rotunda Show Sports. Recently, the Greenwood Library and Lancer Productions teamed up for their third installment of Game Night. I was there to cover the event and play a game or two myself. Check it out. Most people think of the library as a place to study. However, thanks to Lancer Productions, you can now come here for a unique gaming experience. The library does a lot of the stuff for this. The library really does everything. All the game consoles they own. Um, they put all the games together before we get here. We're pretty much here just for manpower, make sure everything runs correctly. Assistant Librarian Mark Lanker explains where they got the idea for game night. Actually, it was an idea that our director, Wendell Barber, had. Um, he'd heard about some other libraries across the country doing this uh, at their colleges and universities and had some real good success with it. So we thought we'd try it here, too. So far, so good. How much does an event like this cost? Lancer Productions student advisor Billy Bolden answers. For this type of event today, it's actually almost virtually free. Um, Lancer Productions paid for the food that we have today, but other than just the simple food cost, there's really nothing much. With games ranging from Mario Kart to Apples to Apples to Mousetrap, there is a game for everyone. Mine's Guitar Hero because I know how to play it. I really like Rock Band too, but I don't know how to do anything but the guitars. <laughs> I'm a big fan of sports games, so I have to go with the, the basketball 2009 this year for the, the March Madness. But Besides the games themselves, what are the other aspects of game night that make it special? I think it's really cool to have WMLU come here and play this loud music in the library. Yeah. It, you know, our library is kind of a loud social place anyway, but it, it makes it yeah. even more different. I think it's just it's kind of cool to see a lot of students come out and, and play games with each other. And, and hang out with each other and just, I think you meet a lot of people that you wouldn't normally meet, you know, through class or, you know, your other activities. So it's a great way to bring people from different groups together here on campus. So is this an event that could happen more than once a semester? It depends on who you ask. I'm not sure about more than once a semester. Uh, just with Lance Productions has a lot going on throughout the year. I mean, we have about three, four, five events every week. So to be able to take two nights of semester new game night would be a lot. But definitely we're going to continue, I think, with at least once a semester, every semester. And so far, we are planning on just doing it next fall. But if there's interest, we could possibly expand it a little bit, maybe have something in a couple months. Either way, it appears that at least one night a semester, Greenwood Library will be about fun and games. This is Paul Eldert reporting for The Rotunda Show. For the record, I am a horrible guitar hero player. I didn't notice. <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of The Rotunda Show. Make sure you check out therotundaonline.com and pick up your issue of The Rotunda on newsstands today. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Bye-bye.